Why Do We Get Sick? by Dr. Sparks, N.D. Have you ever considered that everything you know about illness has been taught to you by a system that makes its fortune by managing symptoms with medications rather than healing? Well, now it's time to consider acute illness from another point of view. For over a century, naturopathic doctors have been teaching people about their health and illness, not merely the suppression of symptoms. If you're here, you're probably ready to unlearn what you think you know. So let's get started. Why do we get sick with cold, flu, or other viruses? Germ theory would tell us that we get sick simply because we've been exposed to a germ, virus, bacteria, or fungi. But that's not the entire picture. Has everyone in your house gotten sick before, but you stayed healthy? You may not have realized it at the time, but you were exposed to that germ. Your body was able to get the upper hand without it stirring up symptoms. How is that, you may wonder? That is what we call terrain theory. What this theory tells us is that the body's state of wellness is either like a force field or a petri dish for the germ. Depending on your state of health, the germ will live, thrive, or die. Acute illness is really a mixture of both germ theory and terrain theory. The stronger a germ is, the healthier the person must be to defend themselves from its attack. Let me explain. There are three pillars that make up your state of health. When any one of them is not optimal, then your healthy state will have weaknesses and make you susceptible to illness. The first pillar is genetics, or what we call your constitution. This is your DNA, or the hand you were dealt by your parents. The second pillar is epigenetics, or what we call your environment and lifestyle. This is where you hold all the cards. The third is pathogens. This could be germs or toxins that come from inside or outside your body. This is a crapshoot. The great news is that twin studies have shown us that the second pillar, our lifestyle, can actually control the way our genetics are expressed. Our lifestyle can also affect our response to the pathogens that we come in contact with every day. So then, why do we get sick? Dr. Henry Lindlar stated in the early 1900s that we would get sick because of three things. Abnormal composition of blood and lymph, accumulation of morbid matter and poisons, and of course, lowered vitality. These things would come around from violating nature's laws, which are good sleep, healthy food, healthy drink, healthy thoughts, moderate exercise, clean air, and getting out in nature and sunshine. When we violate nature's laws repeatedly, we begin to build up morbid matter that eventually changes the composition of our blood and detoxification pathways, and then we become a breeding ground for pathogens. Have you ever noticed a bug was going around, but you avoided getting sick? But then you work some extra shifts, you got really stressed out, you drink a bunch of caffeine or alcohol, eat a bunch of sugar or fast food, and you don't sleep very well. And then you get sick. And you knew you were going to get sick because you didn't take care of yourself. This is what we're talking about. We are always exposed to germs and we always have some living in and on us. But do we become a breed ground for them or do we keep the upper hand? When we follow nature's laws, we are less likely to allow the germ to take hold and take over. That is the answer to why we get sick. Check out my next video about acute symptoms and what they mean. And as always, you can follow me on my blog, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Dr. Sparks ND.